And we're live. Hi. Hey, folks. Folks and things. It's -a me, Sam. And it's, uh, we're Slugfest Games. We're showing you some Tales stuff. And today we're going to play with some uh, solo mode, which was the very first stretch goal unlocked way long ago. Weeks and weeks ago. Um, for those of you just joining us, this is Tales from the Red Dragon Inn, and it's our upcoming dungeon crawl adventure set in the Red Dragon Inn universe. And uh, we're going to play some of the uh, game that's available on uh, the ta uh, this in the Steam Workshop, where you can get the preview and all that sort of stuff. The campaign is live on Kickstarter as Zot Down down there is pointing out, and there's only a week left um, that'll actually be out of date in in an hour, because I believe it, the campaign ends at 5 p.m. Pacific on Thursday of next week. Uh, how is the sound? Hopefully everything is good. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and fire up some stuff. Uh, we're just going to dive into Scenario 2 uh, using the Enhanced Solo Mode. So what is Enhanced Solo Mode or True Solo Mode? It is, um, instead of playing the game, this co-op game as though you were... I had to unmute my audio. Oh, yeah. Instead of playing this co-op game as though you were two heroes doing the adventure like you can in most co-op games. Any any dungeon crawl game where you have a co-op mode, you typically can just play it as two or more heroes, depending on how much uh, brain capacity you have for dealing with a bunch of different things at the same time. Um, what we wanted to do was actually create a, a um, more definitive single-player experience. So you play as a hero... And instead of playing as uh, two heroes with their full array of stuff, you play as one hero and with a companion. And in the game, or in, in the first, in Tales from the Red Dragon Inn, your companion is Otto. Um, you can also play with Pookie as your companion, but we're not going to talk about that one right now. So Otto here is our friendly little mechanical adventurer. And Otto has four different ability cards, um, changing the class that Otto takes. Uh, since I was like, you know what, we're going to rogue it up, so I'm going to play Gurky, which, you know, normally you don't want to play as a rogue when you have to go solo. Because um, it's really hard to get backstabs and that sort of thing. And I was like, well, if Gurky's going to be a rogue, so should Otto. So you can think of a companion as... Um, the figure is a hero and counts as a hero for everything that cares about that. So um, in scenario two, these destructible wall, uh, gravel walls can be destroyed by heroes. That includes Otto. Um, schemers will treat Otto as a foe because Otto is a hero. And my own abilities will treat Otto as a friend, so I could spend this potion of scrapes and bruises to heal Otto if I wanted to. Um, Otto has his own fortitude right here and his own ability, and we'll just do the same thing each time. Um, however, the companion abilities tend to be uh, slightly better than a single normal hero ability, because they only get to do the one thing. So, uh, in this case, you'll leap four and weaken somebody's, which is great because it'll make my backstabs work. Um, some other things about solo mode. Oh, also, uh, auto in solo mode will have two initiative tokens, which I forgot to make before the stream. So, whoopsies. So, we're just going to pretend these Fionas are autos. So, auto will go from his normal adventuring companion mode to recovery mode. Um, while he's in recovery mode, he, you'll notice that uh, in addition to the companion keyword, he has the trivial keyword. The trivial keyword means that schemers ignore it. And then Otto will do this on his turn instead of the, no instead of the fun additional damage and that sort of thing. So in this mode, 
he's slowly repairing. Basically, as soon as he get does this, uh, resolves this scheme three times, he'll come back online and be able to do the cool stuff. But until then, he just walks around. I get a bonus evade token. Thank you, Power Tree. You can go away now. And then I'm going to go ahead and double check my ability cards. Let's see, I got my charges there, I got my charges there, and oh look, another evade token. Copy paste. Those will be handy. Means that I could probably just run away and hide behind auto. Alright, so we've rolled the schemes, we've made the initiative bag, we go into combat phase. And, oh look, auto is going to go first. Thank you, auto. Um, I'm going to drag this up here so that we can see everything together. So auto is going to activate. When auto activates, you control everything that auto does. So I'm not required to just fight this one guy over here. Um, I could run all the way down this way. Um, and I think I will attack one, the nearest foe. Move to the nearest foe. Range three. Yeah. All right, we're going to have auto go up to here. So uh, one, two, three. It's a leap, so I just leap right over the Gizmoblin. And then I weaken two, uh, weaken one each adjacent foe, up to two foes, rather. So I weaken, that's Gizmob, Glitched Moblin two, and Slime four. So they are both weakened. And then I attack for two damage, two targets. So we'll hit both of these guys. So boop, copy, paste, paste, paste. Good stuff. Good job, auto. Auto does the thing, and it's fantastic. There's no cooldown on a companion's ability. The companion just repeats the same action each time. Um, let's see. I'm not seeing much chat stuff, so I'm going to double check to make sure that it is refreshing real quick. Do do. Go here. Okay, there we are. All right, I've got the chat up. Good. Oh, look, there's, look at all. I had scrolled it too far, and I could not see the new words getting dropped because it was paused. All right, so there's the auto turn. Next up, we have the slimes. So we place the initiative pog on the first slime to remind us that it is weakened, and then it performs its scheme. So it's going to move four to the nearest foe and attack for two everything around it. Hey, look, it's already adjacent to auto, so it's just going to stay right there and attack auto. So it's going to do two damage to auto. It is weakened, so it will deal one damage to Otto. Ding. It's fine. Otto's fine. He's got a brick of health. It will be great. And then we progress this, and the next slime goes, and it's going to walk up to Gurky over here and smack Gurky for two points of damage. And it's sad. So sad. I don't think I want to use my evade tokens. I think I'll, I'll be fine where I am. So that's the slimes. Next, we have Gurky revealing his solo mode initiative counter. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, hit and run sounds good. Probably. Let's see. This guy's weakened. This guy's adjacent. We definitely want to deal with some of those. Yeah, we're going to use we're going to use a hidden little bit of hit and run. So. I'm going to drag this up here so that everyone can see it at the same time. This is something I, I learned to start doing when I was doing the um, learn to play sessions through our Discord server. By the way, if you would like to learn how to play the game uh, with, with a little bit more uh, personability and you can ask questions of me and that sort of thing, uh, we are doing the next one, I believe, on Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific. So, first thing I do when I use an ability is I spend, uh, I pay the cost, which in which case, in this case, it's three cooldown markers. Damage. Um, 
by and it's really handy because he has a two target attack okay the next thing i do on the ability is i move four and i'm just gonna one two three four and get right up in here okay now these guys have activated. If we if we kill all of the slimes before we reveal the next room, it can be very bad for us. So we definitely don't want to do that yet. Uh, defeat all the slimes, that is. But I don't mind knocking down some walls. So I think I'm going to go ahead and just use my second action to attack the wall. I only roll the one die, so... We're going to go ahead and do so, just for funsies. It crits. Oh, it crits again. I'm sad that I wasted this attack on the wall now. <laughs> and then I destroy the wall, and it's a joint adjacent wall. And that's uh, written out in the scenario book. And we deploy the echo chamber. Uh, I'm playing on veteran difficulty, and you, when you play solo mode, you use the two-player um, column. So we're going to add some glitched moblins to B and D, some slimes to A, E, and G, and some tra traps. So they are three damage traps to C and H. C. Copy. H. And they're three damage each. Copy. Paste. All right. We're going to go ahead and pop this out here. All right, we have a new glitched moblin. There is only one defeated, so it's going to be, has to be number two. Um, now, when you are doing a reinforcement phase and there are not enough of that figure, you resolve as much of the reinforcements as possible. So this glitch moblin will go on, let's see, we're in the echo chamber down here. So this glitch moblin will go on B, which is the first spot indicated. So this glitch moblin's right here. B. And then we also deploy slimes. Let's see. Slimes to A, E, and G. So reveal number two on A. Number seven on E. And number one on G. And then we just fix this up. Wee. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now this random assignment, uh, folks had asked earlier uh, why it needs to be random. It's just so that it's not as totally predictable. Tried this scenario out on Legend with some friends last week. We got wrecked. Oh, excellent. Good. Legend is um, deceptively difficult. Uh, you you definitely have to be willing to lose some fortitude while you're playing it. So for those of you who don't know, Legend Difficulty uh, introduces the Doom Die. So I'm going to go and grab that right here. This is the Doom Die. Uh, what it does is every time you roll yellow attack dice, you also include the Doom Die. And then this Doom Die, if it rolls one of the uh, horned heads eliminates, will either force you to discard one of your yellow attack dice after the attack roll, or you force you to lose one fortitude to not remove any of these dice. Um, so it adds, uh, it adds a little bit, uh, it reduces how certain you will be on, on pixel life hits and that sort of thing. adds just a wee little variance. All right, so we've deployed some new guys. Uh, that was an attack and a normal attack, and then I'm going to use a shenanigan to leap away from all of the baddies. So I use, look, over there, a distraction, which lets me leap two spaces, so I vault right over the top of all this rubble here, and I get myself a third evade token. So those will be handy soon. What we got next? It's it's the my buddy Otto doing the thing. So uh, it's gonna go after these guys. So I kind of don't want to mess with it. 
uh, one, two, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I guess that could work. One, two, three, four. Mm. I guess we just stay here and beat on this slime again. <laughs> it is so easy to Leroy Jenkins. Uh, especially when you've got this guy. And actually, you know, he needs to he needs to move up and and stay in the fight because I will end up leaving him behind if if I zoom too far ahead. So he's going to run up to this uh, glitched moblin over here. So one, two, three, four spaces, and then punch it for two damage, and it will be fine. So that was glitched moblin number one. Copy. Boop da boop. And it is also weakened. Okay. Hey, it's the Glitched Moblin's turn. So Glitched Moblin number one does its thing. It moves one space to the nearest foe. It's already adjacent to auto, so it stays right there. And then it attacks for one damage against three foes within range three. So auto, obviously, because it's closest. Then this slime, because it's the next closest, one, two spaces. And then it could be anything far up to three spaces away. So we could poke that one. But look, he's weakened. So the damage is reduced to nothing. All right, number two activates. That's this glitched moblin. So uh, glitched moblins have the target acquired keyword, which means that they treat everything on the board as though it were a foe, including other glitched moblins, as well as the slimes. So they're kind of fighting on my behalf. Um, when a figure, uh, when a schemer moves, it takes the laziest path possible. So it wants to get adjacent to either the glitched moblin number three or slime number seven because that's equidistant. And I'm going to have him go after slime number seven. After he moves adjacent, he performs a ranged attack, targeting three foes for one damage here. Ooh. So clearly slime seven because it's the closest. So then one, two, hit slime one, and one, two, hit slime two. So one damage to each of them, one, two, and seven. Copy. One, two, seven. Excellent. And then glitch moblin number three activates. And it can either step here and be adjacent to Gurky and Otto, step up this way and be adjacent to slime four, or step out this way and be adjacent to slime two. I choose to go adjacent to slime two. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, Otto is three spaces away, so it attacks... Slime 4, 2, and Glitch Moblin 2. Uh, there we go. So I've got the Glitch Moblins doing, doing the work for me. It's like I've played this scenario a few times. Alright, that's the Glitched Moblins. That leaves probably Gurky. Yep, Gurky going next. Last but not least... What are we, how are we going to do this? I've got a few options available. I might just invigorate a bit. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Bop. That's not too bad. Anyone got two health? Number one? Yeah, okay. One, two, three, four. We're going to stab Glitched Moblin number one. Using my regular sneak attack. So I did a thieves cantrip to walk up to it. Regular sneak attack. Let's roll that that damage. Uh, let's go ahead and re-roll that guy because it was cocked. And I would really... Yay! I get another epic die. Is good. We'll be using that in a moment. And then I dealt three damage to glitch moblin number one, which defeats it. And we're groovy. Uh, that's the end of the initiative back, so it's the end of the combat phase. We check for any of these bon bonuses, so acid pits. Is any are anybody in acid pits? No? Okay. Then our goal is to find and defeat the gelatinous blob, which is somewhere down here. And if then we check if there are no foes with slime body, then we got to spawn some new baddies. Now what I'm going to potentially do 
is total Leroy Jenkins and just dive deep into this scenario and try and spawn a bunch of guys behind me. This could be bad, because if I don't succeed in the future, they'll all catch up to me and kill me. So, woohoo! <laughs> oh, no problem, Morsesnox. Uh, Morsesnox? Something like that. You You get to that work, you get paid, all that sort of stuff. All right, top of the order, cooldowns, cooldown, cooldown, ah, cooldown. All right, we roll new schemes. There we go. Oh, okay, so the slimes are going to be plopping out traps. That's that's not good. We make the initiative bag. Boom. And we're good to go. Let's see. Hey, good job, Otto, being the best of friends. Uh, one, two, three, four. It's, it feels a little early to bust down this wall. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four? Yeah, I think Otto is just going to stand here and, and cover my butt. Or at least, you know, be where I want to end up being. So Otto's going to go there. Next up, Otto goes again. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, one, two, three. We're going to weaken both of these slimes here. So that's seven and one. So one is weakened. Copy. Seven is weakened. And then we attack them both. Um, and we're going to go ahead and throw all of the damage dice into it, because there's a non-zero chance of, of taking them both out. So let's roll. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, and then six, seven for the base attack, and look at that, two dead slimes, and I feel sad because I should have weakened this glitch moblin instead of the two slimes. So seven damage to each. So we've knocked some out. And I've already recanted on my strategy of blasting forward and taking out a bunch and trying to just spawn everything on the map. Because Otto was like, nah, nah fam, I got this. We can just wreck face. Speaking of Wrecking Face, those slimes are coming for revenge. So starting with number two, this guy right here, uh, they do not have target acquired, so they're going to target the foes that are what are the heroes. So move three to the nearest foe, which happens to be auto. So one, two, stops right there. And then performs a ranged attack for two damage and places a three damage trap adjacent to the target. So... It's going to attack auto for two. Uh, do, do. One. Oh, we could just do this. Swap it out for a three-er. And then we place a three damage trap adjacent to auto. And we're going to just plop it down right here. So um, the rules for placing things, I can't cause it to dam the slime to damage itself by placing the trap on itself. So I have to go into one of these empty spaces. These spaces don't exist because they're off the map. I could put it on this space, that space, or that space. And we're just going to go ahead and make it worse over here. Uh, next up, we have slime number four. Doot doot. And he is going to move three spaces to the nearest foe. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, he's actually equidistant from me and me and Otto. So he's gonna go after Otto. One, two, three. And then a ra two ranged attack. One, two spaces. One, two spaces. Oh, he can't reach either of us. Hooray! I love it when bad guys miss their turns. And then number five, clearly he's coming after Turkey. And bops Gurky for two damage. 
and it's sad. But we're going to go ahead and use our evade token and get into a more optimal position. So one, two spaces. And we happen to be right next to this here wall. Excellent. So that evade token goes away. And that's it for the slimes. Hey, it's me. Okay. Uh, I feel like it is wise for me to just drink a potion right now. So we're going to clear the four of that damage. Good for me. Um, Gizmo Glitch Moblins haven't activated yet, but I happen to be right next to this gravel wall, so we're going to go ahead and attack it. Uh, I am going to roll the, die the attack die, because I might inspire myself. I do not. It's sad. We spawn the next room. So we've got just slimes on C, D, and E. So shuffle up this. We've got slime 7 on C. We've got slime 8 on D. And we got slime 3 on E. So 7, 8, and 3. And this is fine because the slime's already activated, so I don't have to worry about them continuing to beat my face in. And then last but not least, there are some traps on A and B. Gurky's just a massive photo album labeled Favorite Times I Stabbed a Guy. Yep. Gurky's just, in this case, Gurky's feeding uh, all manner of damage dice over to the Glitch Moblin, and Glitch Moblin's doing the, you know, the actual work. Gurky should feel ashamed. Uh, let's see. And then what do we want to do? Uh, probably just move adjacent to these guys, what already activated. One, two, three... Yeah, we'll we'll go we'll sit ourselves right here. It'll be fine. Okay. Next up. Oh look, it's Gurky. Which means the glitch moblins will go last. Uh let us uh, just stab some guys. So we're going to lay into slime number seven here. I'm going to use a little bit of contact poison always hurts as a reaction to beginning an attack. Before I determine damage for my attack, I weaken one each target. So, I weaken one this slime here. Which means I will then get to backstab it. Hooray! Sneak attack! Roll this for damage. We do two plus one is three. And we add a bonus damage die. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a threever. And it's still weakened, so I'm going to go ahead and stab it a second time and think to myself, you know, we're going to go ahead and take this die just to make sure it's dead. Oh, we extra make sure it's dead. So that is slime seven defeated. Um, I have a shenanigan left. I elect not to use it. And now we have the glitched moblins activating. And they're going to do their thing. Now the tricky bit is, I know what, what the bad guy in this room is. And I don't have any ways to displace it. So I'm literally going to be, need to rush it down. Um, which means I should probably spend a few turns setting up for that. Alright, glitched moblins. So, we've got number two going first. And it's already adjacent to some foes, so it stays adjacent to them. And it attacks three targets for one damage each. Let's do it to Slime 2, 4, and Glitch Moblin 3. 2, 4, 3. And, oh look, 3 does the same thing, and it's going to do it to 4, 2, and Glitch Moblin 2. So they're, they're nice, nice little happy infighting over there. Good. And there we go. Rogues doing rogues thing. It'll be great. All right. So that's the end of the round. We check for uh, acid pools. We check for uh, did we defeat? Did we win the scenario yet? 
we check for is there somebody, is there at least one slime still in play? And that all checks out and looks good. So we go to the top of the order, and Gurky gets many of his cooldowns back. We roll new scheme dice. Okay. All right, more traps, more pew pew pews. We make an initiative bag, we dive into the combat round. Nice and easy. Oh, it's hero time. Uh, I feel like it's a little early to start this fight, so I'm going to beat up slime number eight here. I spend a charge for a little bit. I'm going to use sneak attack targeting slime eight. In response to sneak it using an attack, I'm going to contact poison it, weakening the guy. And then I throw two dice of damage at him. Oh, just a casual four damage. Well, that's good. Because, oh wait, no, it's better. It's five damage because my sneak attack does one damage by itself. Well, heck. Why don't we just hit him again? Crit. Let's get that inspiration. We do. Excellent. We've defeated Slime 8, so it won't be punching me. That's good. And then we're going to shenanigan leave. Nah, we're not going to shenanigan leave. I think we're fine where we are. Ah, Otto, get over here. Be my friend. One, two, three, four. He's just he's just booking it over to me because we need to we need to get into this next room. Uh, unfortunately, that means he doesn't make any attacks. Now the slimes go. So slime number two. Uh, let's see. Sorry for the herky jerkiness. Uh, slime number two is going to move three spaces towards a foe. That's auto. One, two, three. Attacking Otto for two points of damage. Poor guy. And dropping down a trap token. Uh, we're going to put that right there. Okay. And then slime number three, that's this one, is going to go after Gurky. I'm going to have him come up this way, just so he's a little bit out of the way. Uh, the slime body keyword means that they don't suffer the pain of acid pools or anything like that. Otto was indeed constructed to suffer. It is his lot in life. Um, hits Gurky. I'm going to spend an evade token. So I get hit, but I don't make any more traps on the board. And more importantly, I move adjacent to this here wall. It's, it's that aggressive evasion. Uh, number four activates. One, two, let's see. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. It actually wants to stand on this space because slime body also means they ignore traps. So one, two, three. Hits auto. Creates another one of these here traps. Copy, paste. And Otto's, you know, he's, he's doing a little worse for wear. He's about halfway out. Oh, not yet. And then number five activates. One, two, three. Also attacks Otto. And then we've got all this here trap damage in between us and the glitched moblins. Hopefully it doesn't bite us in the butts. And then there's two damage over here. So so Otto's, Otto's not doing too hot. All right, we got a Gurky. And we think to ourselves, do we want to just dive in? I mean, why not? <laughs> um, yeah, I knocked down the wall. So sneak attack, targeting the wall. I roll the die for damage. Hey, look, I successfully dealt a point of damage. The wall clears, along with its adjacent wall. We've gone full Jenkins into this pure map. 
So, veteran difficulty, we have slimes on F, G, H, and I. So shuffle that up. Uh, seven on F. One on H. Oh, wait, F, G, alphabetical. Eight on H. And that process of elimination, six on I. And we get to determine if if diving in deep was a smart move or not. It probably was not, but it's the fun move. Uh, gelatinous brute on E. Ding. And then I believe that's it. So if we destroy the pillars, they'll deal seven damage to the blob. All right, so we busted down the wall. Uh, then, oh. And because we spawned a new guy that was not previously rolled, and this is why you roll the die even if a figure is going to perform the same ability each time, is because it's a reminder that you didn't roll the die at the start of the round. So he's going to do sizzle. Oh, that's not good. And he's going to go into the bag and activate later this round. Okay. Okay. I'm going to, let's see, I action one was an attack, shenanigan, I'm going to look over there, distraction, and leap two spaces, one, two, and gain another evade token, and then I'm just going to hit this here pillar, oh, one more thing, by the way. Uh, the gelatinous blob has 30 health and also 2 toughness. For those of you who don't know, toughness is a single instance of just ignore an attack. So in this case, the slime gelatinous blob ignores the first two attacks. Now this only applies to normal attacks, so if I break this pillar and make it fall down on top of the blob, then it just bypasses the toughness. All right, so we smack this pillar. We're just going to do a normal sneak attack. I don't think I'm going to try and destroy it. I'm just going to hit it. Crit. All right. I do one, two, three points of damage to the rotten pillar. Hooray. And that makes it fall down and smack the blob for five. So he's, he's almost a fourth of the way there. Good, good for us. Good for us. Okay. So that was my two actions and my shenanigan. Coming up next is Boo. So they're they're chasing these slimes. Uh, number two goes first. He is not weakened, so he does the full thing. Um, he does not want to walk through acid, does not want to walk through this trap. So he's going to go one, two spaces to right here. And shoot these three slimes. Pew, pew, pew. So two, four, and five. Two, four, and five. And then number three. One, two, three. Uh, oh, wait. They only move two spaces. Uh, sorry, one space. So he just moves the one space. And he still shoots those three. Uh... The closest foe happens to be the other glitched moblin. So number three is tracking the glitched moblin and goes pew, pew, pew. So that is to number two and four and five. Hey, that defeats number four. Thank you, glitched moblin. You're, you're doing the Lord's work. If Deirdre was here, it'd be the goddess's work. All right. We've got some glitched moblin. Not glitched moblin. We've got some auto helping out. Uh, one, two, three, four. I don't think diving into the acid is a smart move. One, two, three, four. And we're just in position. It'll be fine. And then last but not least... The gelatinous blob. So it's going to push one each adjacent figure. Uh, a figure is any standee token 
miniature, anything that represents a schemer or hero. Uh, which means that this slime gets pushed. And I could push it adjacent to myself, which isn't the worst thing in the world. Because it means that I'll already be next to it. But I kind of want to push it up here. So the gelatinous blob pushes it. Push just means must be farther away. The space is farther away than adjacent. Then it'll move one towards the dripping passage. So it's trying to get past this green dotted line. So we can have it go up or we can have it go down. Either way is fine. I think I want to have it go up. And then it performs a ranged attack. One, two, it targets Gurky right here. I guess if I had it go down, it would target auto, but I think this is fine. Targets Gurky, and is going to do three damage to the poor guy. Oh, poor guy. So we take our three damage, and there's a harm effect, but never mind the harm effect. I'm going to evade. And in fact, I'm going to evade twice. So when you use two of the same token, you combine their effects. So I'm going to move four spaces and set myself up for other fun, exciting things. One, two, three, four. Not poor innocent Gurky. Whatever shall he do? So I'm setting myself up to take on this rotten pillar now. I am, I am kind of speed running. Um, there's, there's a few, there's a few chinks in the armor right now, and. Uh, but I think we'll be okay. So, next up. Check for acid pit damage. Have we defeated the blob? No. Is there a slime body in play? There is. So we are good to go. Uh, Alright, so top of the order we do cooldowns. So, click and click. And then we roll scheme dice. Roll. Oh, they're not doing too good. Oh, there's some gurgles and pain. All right, we make an initiative bag, and we go. Hey, good job. Uh, one, two, three, four. Ooh, I like this a lot. Okay, one, two, three, four. So Otto, the swindle bot, is a leaper. So he just casually leaps over all of these hazards and the enemies and lands in a happy spot next to this here rotten pillar. Next up on the Swindlebot scheme uh, ability, he weakens one, two adjacent foes. Let's weaken the two things what are actually bad guys. So the gelatinous blob and the slime, slime number one. And then he attacks two things, and I think he should attack the Rotten Pillar and the Gelatinous Blob. So he peels a point of toughness off the Gelatinous Blob, so that'll be good, because now the Gelatinous Blob only ignores one more attack. And he de does two damage to the Pillar. Good. We're almost there. Thank you, Otto. Oh! What a hero! Auto just activates twice in a row. Fantastic. So, I mean, there's no reason not to repeat the thing that he just did. So, he stands right there, weakens the two guys what are already weakened. You can stack weakened tokens, and they are cumulative. So, this means that the uh, gelatinous blob is going to do two less damage when it activates. Then Otto attacks the blob and the pillar. The blob ignores the attack, but the pillar then dies. And oh look! Seven damage to the boss. Good job. Good job, Swindlebot. You're better at this than I am. Copy, paste, and boom. So we're almost halfway there. Which is good, because in four turns we just lose. Because neither of us can actually stop the blob from going forward. Excellent. So so Swindlebot was like, nah, it's my job. Now this is bad. So Gurgle Sploosh, push one each adjacent figure. So in the order of our choosing, uh, I mean, this guy can go into the corner. 
Auto goes here. Gurky has a problem, though. So when a schemer pushes a hero, if the hero can be pushed into a dangerous space, the schemer will do so. So Gurky gets shoved directly into acid, and it's great. For certain definitions of great. Then is going to move one space towards the Dripping Passage. Uh, let's have him go down so it's a little closer to us. And then, finally, performs a two damage attack. Bursting and hitting everything around it, which is nothing. Good. All right, so we gotta, we got to pile on another, it looks like, uh, 16 damage before it escapes us. Well, that'll help. So we're going to, first things first, drink this, because we are nearly wounded. Next, these guys are in the way. Um, you know what? Okay. We're going to attack this pillar here. Yeah, the rule was that was... What killed Gog in our game? Double pushes onto trapped acid. Oh, Lord. That's so bad. <laughs> yes, trapped acid is worse. Um, no, I, I feel really bad for you guys. Uh, yeah, you got to watch out for when the blob activates, because it's just going to keep shoving people out of the way. Now, Gog is one person that you want to have adjacent to the blob, because especially when he's wounded, he just keeps pushing the blob back. But, you know, that comes with its own terrible results. Uh, anywho, I'm going to use my charge ability. Uh, just throwing this out here. So I'm spending a charge to make a ranged attack for two dice of damage. I'm targeting the pillar. I happen to have this spoon, so I'm pretty sure I can do three damage to it. But, you know, we'll see if we could just roll it naturally like a boss. Do three damage to the pillar, and another seven to the boss. Do, do. He's almost defeated. Good for us. All right. That's one action. My next action is actually going to be hit and run. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this over real quick. Where is it popped up on? There we go. I need some cooldown markers. Get all cinematic. Copy, paste, paste. I move one space to here. I then attack the gelatinous blob in response to performing an attack, however. I use a little bit of contact poison always hurts. So I spend a charge from that to weaken the gelatinous blob to then enable my backstab bonus, so I can do three dice of damage. And normally, I take this to do yet more damage, but I do know that I'm going to activate it at least one more time this round, so I'm going to save it and see if I can get a second um, epic die into my pool, which I do. So one, two, three, four, just four damage. So not a ton of damage, but he's getting there. I think he's only got five health left. And I add another die to the pool. Good, good, good. Using all these here abilities. Oh, I think I took something off the board. Yes, I did. So that trap is right there. All these here abilities there. Okay, I don't have a shenanigan, and I used two actions, so uh, we're just gonna stay here and hope hope it's all good. Now, now the slimes activating is is potentially very bad, but at least they're not spewing traps everywhere. So, slime one. Hey, look, moving the initiative token onto the tracker card reminded me that he's weakened twice, so he'll actually do no damage. He's coming after Otto, and swings and misses. So no damage to Otto, hooray. Slime number two activates. 
And it wants to, it looks like Gherky is going to be the closest, so it's just going to take the fastest route to Gherky, remembering that it just ignores the existence of traps. So one, two, three, four. Doot doot. It's going to get there. And then it does a melee-ish attack. Number three, where's number three? Looks like it wants to just go to Gherky. One, two, three, four. Number five. One, two, three, four. Number six. One. Oh, that's bad. Bad to be Gherky. Gherky takes two to the face. Number seven. Looks like Gherky takes another two to the face. Everything was coming up Millhouse, and now and now it's looking very wounded. And then number eight also smacks Gherky, and that will wound Gherky. Um, so I'm going to take two more to the face, and you'll note that that is now nine damage on Gherky. So we, when a hero is wounded, you clear all damage tokens on that hero, and then you flip them over to their wounded side, and then they will remain wounded for the rest of the game. Uh, even if they heal. So you can't heal past, back up above your wounded side. All right. But I think I'm going to be okay. As long as, as, long as Gherky doesn't die, I can double tap the, the blob and win the scenario. Um, assuming we can survive until the end of the scenario. Uh, at the end of the round. So, Glitched Moblins activate, and they're going to explode... And if they harm at least one figure, they deal two damage to themselves. So number two explodes, doesn't harm anything. Number three explodes, doesn't do anything. And then last but not least is Gherky, and Gherky totally going to take out the gelatinous blob. Uh, let's, let's give it a sneak attack. Um, and we're going to blow all of the bonus damage dice. Big damage. That's a defeated gelatinous blob. Da -na -na -na. And then we could do a couple of things. I'm going to take a breather and then immediately use it again to uh, run away. One, two, and get an evade token. Okay. That's the end of the combat rounds, so... Ah! There we go. We check for acid pit damage. Gherky was clever enough to step off of the acid and not suffer damage. Then we find and defeat the gelatinous blob. We did! Let's see. If the gelatinous blob has been defeated during the objective phase, we win! Huzzah! Go us! Um, and that's... That's a te teaser for like how solo mode works. So you'll note that you know you get to do a lot more things as an individual hero. You basically perform twice as many actions. As you progress through the campaign, you will unlock additional card slots. So normally you are restricted to four hero cards. In solo mode, you can have five or six hero cards, depending on the chapter of the campaign, so that you always have something you can do. Um, as well as equipping additional abilities. Uh, now, Otto himself will not level up over the course of the game. So, uh, where he'll start the game as a very, as, as a comparable beat stick, capable of taking out enemies roughly at the same speed as a hero. Um, Later on in the campaign, it's going to lean more and more heavily on the hero to do the majority of the work while Otto is playing Distraction. So Otto is a very useful pile of hit points that aren't the hero and is very good at removing tokens from, from guys. Different versions of Otto do different things. The uh, Otto as the Utilibot allows him to take scenario actions and do some minor healing activities. Um, Blastbot, or Otto when he's pretending to be a wizard, has massive a lightweight AoE attacks. And then 
Uh, we've got oh, welcome, welcome to the chat, Skycast. And then Bullybot Auto likes to do suplexes, so lots of grabbing foes and ideally dropping them into dangerous spaces. And that's that's your run through with solo mode. Any questions, comments, concerns? No, I don't think so. Okay. So uh, what's going on? Things to know. Uh, we have our last painting stream. Well, okay. The last painting stream during the campaign while it's live is on Tuesday. And we have some exciting goodies to show off at that stream. Um, we have our final countdown stream next Thursday starting at 4 p.m. Pacific. On Saturday, I will be online with uh, Shut Up and Sit Down so that they and we're going to have at one of these here scenarios and play a couple of rooms and just chit chat and that sort of thing and basically show folks in a different time zone uh, in, in a more um, European friendly time zone a what the game looks like. So that'll be at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, then, last but not least, we have on Monday another Learn to Play event at 10 a.m. Pacific time on Monday. Um, and you can sign up for that in the Discord channel. Let's see. If an enemy would be deployed on a trap, but the only available space is under them... Uh, would they hit themselves? Ah, if an enemy would deploy a trap, but the only space under them is themselves, would they hit themselves? So, let's let's engineer the example here. Doot, and copy and paste, and here's Gurky, and here's the slime, and the slime hit Gurky, and it's dropping a trap down. Um, traps like tokens can't occupy the same spaces so you can't put a trap on top of a trap that's already in play so in this situation yes the trap would have to go back on top of the slime and if every available space has a trap does it not uh so this trap would go on top of the slime now in the slimes case it just doesn't do anything. The slime just lives happily on that trap. But let's pretend that it wasn't a slime and it was instead the glitched moblin. Then when this trap is placed, it will trigger immediately and deal damage to the glitched moblin. Because there's no spaces adjacent to it. Uh, in the event of the slime, it just plops it right down on the slime. Now, the follow-up question is, of course... What happens when another slime hits Gurky? Where does the trap go? There are no spaces adjacent to Gurky. Um, the rule is if you can't place on a on the target space, you place on the next closest target space. So you just go out one step further. Now, in practice, this doesn't happen unless you are forcing it to happen. So this trap could go here or here here, 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 or here. So it just you just keep going farther and farther out. And this is true for deployment of uh, reinforcements. So if uh, this, uh, this slime is on E, and the deployment table tells you to put a glitched moblin on E, well, they can't occupy the same space, so you place the glitched moblin in a space adjacent to that space. Um, if E has a trap and the and deployment table tells you to put a guy on it, you just deal the trap damage directly to the guy that was just deployed. And if you're playing a Zot, that is a wise thing to do if you could somehow uh, layer traps on top of uh, spaces where bad guys come into play. Um, there's a couple of scenarios that have uh, enemy spawners, and you spamming fire tokens onto those spaces um, lets you soften them up as they deploy. Any other excellent question, Tiny? Any other comments, questions, concerns? 
the fill you if the space has this trap that doesn't. I believe I've answered both of those questions with, with these piles of examples. Okay. Well, I think that just about wraps it up. So as you can tell, um, the, the biggest... The biggest reason for companion to exist as a as a mechanic is to is to make that single player experience very snappy, um, redu making it so that you're only focused on what your hero can do, because what your henchman or companion can do is is uh, more rote. It's a very straightforward, useful ability, but it's something that is predictable and and consistent, and you don't have to, you don't have a whole bunch of other things to juggle. Can Zot reveal himself as a traitor by placing wizard fire under his allies? Um, unfortunately, no, because, well, you can place the wizard fire under your allies, but the wizard fire won't trigger and deal damage to your friends. They just have, you know, a warm feeling of, of companionship and friends. It, it It's straight up friendship fights uh wizard fire doesn't hurt friendly figures yep they can still zot can absolutely put wizard fire under his friends um and it's it, it's things that it's the sort of thing that you do when zot's in play or gurky or eve anyone who can do a lot of um displacement effects while also moving themselves i mean heck even even fiona can do it so, so Zot, very frequently, um, gaming groups will either determine Zot is the glass cannon and lean hard into making giant lightning bolts that clear rooms every other, every few rounds, or they'll turn on utility mode for Zot and he'll be spamming damage tokens and everyone else in the party will be, will have the ability to um, displace enemies on top of those traps or benefit from those traps redirecting how the enemies move. Because if you wrap Fiona in wizard fire, then melee attackers can't really get to her to make their attacks. And friendly fire and trap exist in the same space. Ah, yes. Um, the question from chat is... Can a wizard fire token and a trap exist in the same space? Yes, because they are not the same token. So it makes it like extra, extra bad for for the enemies. And that's why the wizard fire tokens are distinctly different um, punch outs. Any other questions, comments, concerns? I'm going to pause real quick. Just just wait for it. I don't think there's anything else. Is there? All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and call it there. Thank you for joining us for the stream. Um, yeah, we've got a whole bunch of upcoming streaming events. They're all in the last update that was made to the Kickstarter campaign. Uh, thank you very much for helping support our uh, game on Kickstarter. We have unlocked all of the things that I wanted to get. So now it's just like, oh, let's let's get some extra minis. Do some Swifty swaps. Let's see. I'm really hoping we can get copies out sooner than February 2023. We are too. Um, but we are being realistic because we can't make predictions on shipping times based on anything but what's currently going on. Um, and we definitely wanted to make sure that we didn't um, set ourselves up for failure by promising that we could deliver when we actually feel like we should be able to. Um, but yes, yeah, so for those of you who don't know, and there's very few of you who don't know... Um, the game industry and really the luxury good industry as a whole. So clothes, games, video games, everything. That's physical stuff that needs to get shipped is having horrible logistics problems because 
none of this luxury stuff has any priority when it comes to importation and getting onto boats and getting onto trains and trucks and transporting from point A to point B. So things like board games, which are a luxury commodity, uh, they keep getting put to the back of the line whenever a new shipment of things like toilet paper or food arrive. And it's like, oh, yeah, you know, th th those those are important. Um, and that's happened basically all of 2020. Uh, and into and the fact that it happened all through 2020 had uh, ripple effects all through 2021. And now everyone is feeling it because for parts of 2020 stuff was already on boats and on trains going to their locations. And now you're all feeling it. And it's, it's gotten to the point where Kickstarter themselves have even like, Hey, there's, there's a top bar uh, article for you all to read now. Yeah. So so we're trying our best. We gotta we gotta be realistic with our um, uh, expectations. And that said, the game is likely going to be able to go to our manufacturer during quarter one of next year. And you know, depending on how how quickly you can get onto a boat and how quickly you can get onto a train. Now get off of that boat and then on to some other form of transportation. We'll see how it goes. Oh man. So so chat say, there's a, a win zero from chat. They build medical devices, which are priority items. But those two, there's a huge demand for those actual priority items as well. So you get the problem on the other end. Uh yeah, logistics is a nightmare this year. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see if it gets better, but we'll find out. Uh, time will tell. Other questions, comments, concerns. Uh, if you join us, uh, when, Wrench's little helper uh, just linked to the Discord channel uh, a few minutes ago. If you sign up and join our Discord channel, you can sign up for our playtest group and play some of the other content for Tales from the Red Dragon. And ooh, um, it, it's much less pretty because it's faster to just make stuff that doesn't have the art assets in it. Um, but I am also upgrade, updating stuff with art as it comes in. Um, like, we have about a third of the maps finished, but, uh, but the other... Two thirds of them just, you know, they look like hexes on a on a blank white map, as you would expect. All right, I think that's that's good. So thank you very much. Uh, we'll we'll touch base again come come Sunday ish. Valid alpha testing is valid testing. Uh, correct. It's more like beta testing. There's there's very few things that are changing between what folks are seeing in the preview mod and what they'll see uh, in in the actual game game, you know, other than the look and feel stuff. Okay, all right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it was a pleasure to show you guys this mode and to answer some of those questions. And I'm gonna call it a night. So, uh, if you are interested in the game, you can head over to um, our Kickstarter campaign. And let me go get a link for that, unless French's little helper beats me to it. Doop doo. Come on. Scroll, scroll. There we go. So you can hit the Kickstarter campaign right there. We are already well overfunded. So, so really what you want to do is get in on the campaign so that you can get the Kickstarter kit for free. Free goodies. Not available in retail. And there we go. 
All right. Well, thank you very much, and I hope you all have a great evening. And we'll see you possibly on Saturday with Shut Up and Sit Down. All right. So long.